I, like everyone, did a lot of dumb things as a kid, but the most unforgivable sin I committed as a youngster was, of course, playing Pokemon incorrectly. Whether it was think something about the franchise that was completely wrong, or do something in the video games that people would call me a complete idiot if I did today. I think we've all done things related to Pokemon that are pretty dumb at some point in time. So, I'm going to share some of the best ones that I can think of. Here are some really dumb things that I did in Pokemon at some point in my life. Where better to start off than the anime? This was like many, my first introduction to the franchise. I became very familiar with Ash wanting to win the Indigo League, so because of this, I for the longest time thought that the Kanto region was called the Indigo region. In fact, I didn't even know it was called Kanto until Fire Red and Leaf Green came out. I was convinced that they eventually changed the name of the region from Indigo to Kanto for the remakes. But no, it's always been called Kanto since the game started. Silly me. You ever thought a Pokemon evolved into something that it doesn't? I've heard of plenty of people thinking that Tauros evolved into Buffalant, or Luftisk evolving into a Lomomola, but as a kid, I thought Ditto evolved into Eevee. I am fully aware of how stupid this sounds, but please hear me out. I knew that Pokemon evolutions went in Dex order, but didn't think about standalone Pokemon. So I saw that Eevee came after Ditto in the Dex, and my stupid kid brain thought, Evolution. I mean, Ditto transforming into any Pokemon, Eevee evolving into multiple Pokemon, not the worst thing in the world. Speaking of Ditto, it was also the first ever Pokemon I used a Master Ball on. I knew that the Master Ball was an 100% catch, but I guess I thought that Ditto was a really rare spawn or something. I guess it's not as bad as wasting a Master Ball on a Magikarp. One of my first times playing through Pokemon Red, I was making really good progress through what I thought was the Indigo region at the time, with my fully evolved Blastoise, when one day I got bored and decided to start a new file for fun. I wasn't planning on saving over my current file, just play the very beginning a bit by starting with a different Pokemon, until I wanted to continue my actual file, and after messing around a bit with the boxes in the PC, I went to return to my actual save file and found out that it was deleted and somehow saved over with this new file I messed around on. This is because, when you switch PC boxes in Generation 1, it saves the game, meaning accidentally deleting all the progress I'd made. I of course started again, but yeah, it was stupid. Only veteran Pokemon players will know what this is. If you don't know, it's called an action replay. It's basically used to cheat in different DS games, in ways like giving player unlimited money, unlimited items, infinite health, etc. I got one of these to mess around in my Pokemon Diamond, since I'd basically done everything I can in the game. I wanted to have a bit of fun, so I abused my axe from replay when I first got it so much that the game crashed whenever I tried to open the puffin case, meaning that on my original diamond file it was basically impossible to make puffins. Anyway, I activated the walkthrough wall cheat, allowing me to have even more fun walking through walls and stuff. And while playing, I stupidly thought it would be a good idea to save behind the counter inside a building, and after doing that, the action replay stopped working, meaning that my character was stuck forever. I ended up having to order another action replay just so I could play my file again. But have this be a lesson to everyone. If you're going to use a walkthrough reward glitch, don't be a dumbass and save in a spot where you'll be stuck for good. This is a more unique scenario since it doesn't really involve playing Pokemon but it does involve the franchise, specifically the anime. As a kid, I had two huge interests, the Pokemon anime and the Scouts. Yeah, I did the Scouts for a few years as a kid, and really enjoyed it. Every week I had the Scouts, and before I left, Pokemon would play on the TV. One Friday evening, the episode where Ash faces off against Juan, the 8th Hoenn gym leader, was playing. The gym battle episodes were always my favourite as a kid, and I really wanted to see what would happen in this one. I couldn't watch it though because I had to leave to get ready to attend the Scouts. So instead of leaving like a normal person, I quit the Scouts then and there, just so I could watch Pokemon. And that is the story of how I quit the Scouts. I too tried to use strength against the truck outside the SSN to see if Mew was there. When I first played Pokemon Red, I never got the Silth Scope. In fact, at the time I didn't even know about it, since I never got it. 
you need it to get past the Marowak ghost in the Pokemon Tower. Except, I never did that. Because instead, I just threw a Poké Doll at it. In the games, these allowed you to run away from any wild encounter, including the Marowak ghost. And when you throw out the Marowak ghost, it goes away and you can continue past it. This was of course changed in the Let's Go games, where you actually need the Silph Scope this time. But for a while, I thought you were supposed to throw a Poké Doll at it meaning that I didn't know about the Silscope until probably years later. Okay, let's move forward a few generations. Gen 6 was probably the generation I put the most hours into, being the only gen that I played competitive in, which included a lot of breeding for legitimate perfect IV Pokemon as well as EV training them. I remember doing horde battles to get EVs up quickly, and in one of my EV grind sessions, I had a full team of Pokemon that required defense and HP EV training on Victory Road against Geodude, Graveler, and Lickitung hordes. The only other horde encounter in this area was Floatzel, and in one of those encounters, this happened. A random shiny Floatzel. I wanted to catch it, like a normal person, however, if I did, it means that I would have to faint four of the Floatzel, and any Pokemon that you faint and catch gives EVs to the Pokemon in the party. Floatzel gives speed EVs, not defense or HP, so if I were to catch the shiny Floatzel, I would have to reset the entire party's EVs and EV train them all over again. So I bit the bullet, fainting four Floatzels and catching my first ever shiny one. But then I reset over it because I didn't want to have to deal with EV training Pokemon all over again. So yeah, probably one of the worst shiny fails you'll ever hear about. Even worse, seeing how as I did it on purpose and immediately regretted it. It took me well over a year or so playing Pokemon Go to figure out how exactly to get nice, great and excellent throws. I knew that the circle had to be small when getting excellent throws, but I didn't know that you had to get the ball inside the small circle for it to count. So for ages, I would just get the circle small and throw it not caring where the ball landed wondering how the hell these throws even worked. I found out eventually. When I was younger, my family and I played the Pokemon version of Monopoly. No, not that Monopoly. This Monopoly. The original one. In this version, you were able to play as a Pikachu, a Bulbasaur, a Charmander, a Blastoise, a Clefairy, or Mewtwo. And even more interestingly, this Pokemon version of Monopoly came with some house rules in a booklet. Some of these rules included rolling double ones, which let you go anywhere on the board, rolling double twos let you collect 200 from go, double threes let you collect 50 from every player, etc. Well, not only did we think these were actual rules that you had to follow, but I also thought that only Mewtwo could use the teleporting rule, since it said Mewtwo in the rule, only Clefairy could use the second house rule, and only Bulbasaur could use the third. So because of this, I only played as Mewtwo, thinking that only Mewtwo could teleport across the board with the double one rule, which was ridiculous looking back at it. Little did I know, I was basically cheating. So there was this video on YouTube uploaded years ago of a guy telling people how to increase the shiny odds in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. In the video he explains that if you put two dittos in the daycare, your shiny odds double. He then went into the grass and immediately found a shiny Chansey. I, like a dumbass, believed this and tried it. And of course, it didn't work. The video was obviously fake, since it was very clear that the dude was using an action replay or something to make all the encounters a guaranteed shinies, since even if your shiny odds are doubled in Gen 4, they would just become the same odds in Generation 6 and onwards, which still isn't very high. Not only that, but in the video, after finding his shiny Chansey, he accidentally went into the grass again and found another apparently random shiny Chansey. Unfortunately, I scoured YouTube trying to find this video since it was pretty big at the time, so much so that I remember seeing a video from another channel debunking this video, but I'm pretty certain that the video was taken down eventually since, again, it was obviously fake, which somehow still fooled me embarrassingly. But if you do know what video I'm talking about, please link me. Do you guys remember your first ever shiny hunt? I remember mine. It was for a shiny Trico in Emerald. I didn't want to reset my file and hunt for a Trico at the beginning of the game, so I tried to hatch a shiny one. 
My plan was to get a Trico egg from the daycare, walk as many steps until it was one step away from hatching, save right before it hatched, move one step, hatch the egg, if it wasn't shiny, reset and continue hatching the same egg until it was shiny. And it was obviously never going to be shiny since the egg already wasn't shiny, and as we all know, the same egg can't be shiny. So let's just say I learned the hard way. I used to think that to make Pokemon catch easier, you had to press left and right depending on which way the ball rocked, then press A to guarantee the capture. I'm sure a lot of people believe something along these lines, and this is the one that I believed. And looking back at it, it's pretty dumb. When I played Pokemon Red, I called myself Ash, and I called my rival Gary. Okay, it's not that bad, but looking back at it, I think it's pretty dumb. And finally, the last dumb Pokemon related thing that I used to do in this video is... I did not know that Pikachu was a mouse. To be honest, I wasn't 100% sure what Pikachu was, but I didn't think it was a mouse. I'm pretty sure at the time I thought it was probably a rabbit. I mean, come on, you can't blame me. Which one do you think it looks closer to? I am willing to argue it looks more like a rabbit than a mouse. And those are some of the dumbest things that I've done relating to Pokemon sometime in the past. Of course, these are only my experiences, so do feel free to share yours in the comments. I'm sure some of you guys will have stories even more outrageous than mine. And if you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like, as it does help out a lot. Subscribe and ring the bell for more videos in the future. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.